Hello everyone, my name is Kristen, and this blog is intended to be one on um, primarily vegan nutrition and health, especially natural health. But um, I actually want to do my first post on another topic which uh, impacts me greatly, and that is type 1 diabetes, which I have had for almost two years. Um, just a little bit of information on me, I guess. Uh, I'm almost 19, and by that I mean I'm going to be 19 about a month and a half. Um, I was diagnosed with diabetes when I was 17. I have been, or type 1 diabetes. I have been vegan since I was uh, 16 and vegetarian since I was 12, I think. <laughs> um, and just to give you a little bit of background on the impact that diabetes has had on like my um, physical body, I always used to weigh about 125. Um, I've weighed about 125 since I was like 11. <laughs> um, and all the way up until about seven months ago, I weighed about 125. But um, corresponding sort of with my wonderful gift, and I really am thankful for this, of my insulin pump, my Animus Ping, his name is Cold Wallace, I started to gain weight. Um, and I also noticed that my insulin requirements are going up and up and up, which makes sense that I would gain weight. But of course I needed to give myself the correct amount of insulin to um, try to preserve my own health because high blood sugar is terrible. Um, so at first I was using like 30 units of insulin a day at my at diagnosis and as my honeymoon period ended, as things changed, it went up and up and up and I was using about 40 units and all of a sudden it jumped up and after the holidays probably because I overate here and there my insulin requirements went up and up and up and I thought that you know after I stopped eating a little bit they would sort of level off go down and I'd lose weight but that just didn't happen um so even though I on on a day-to-day -day basis I was watching what I eat and I always watch what I eat um and eating healthy and exercising for an hour or more per day with yoga or rollerblading or hiking or walking. Um, even with all these things and even with working three, uh, eight hours a day, three times a, a week as a CNA, which is a lot of running back and forth, a lot of lifting and stuff, my insulin requirements went up and up until I was using about 65 units a day um, and until I found that I had gained like 25 pounds. Um, and then after all of that is when I realized that I really wanted to pay a visit to my endocrinologist and let him know that I needed some help. I had done some research and, um, oh wait, there's something else I wanted to mention. Um, besides my weight gain, uh, diabetes wreak wreaks havoc on like all sorts of hormonal systems. Um, and another thing I've had problems with since my diagnosis is um, my menstrual cycle. It used to be very, very regular until I developed diabetes, and after going on insulin, it became relatively non-existent. I would maybe get my period once every three, four, even six months. So I've had maybe a handful of periods over the last two years, and that, that worries me. Um, tests that my endocrinologist have run, has, has run have not brought up anything. I apparently don't have PCOS, or at least I didn't have any indication of that a year ago. I don't have thyroid disease, which I'm very thankful for, so I don't know what it is that's causing this. And, um, well, that was another reason why I wanted to talk to my endocrinologist about these things. So, I had done some research, and there was two drugs I wanted to try out. One is typically used as a uh, type 2 diabetes drug, and it's called metformin. You may have heard of it because if you have a diabetic aunt or uncle or grandma, they probably take it if they're type 2. Um, it's supposed to reduce your insulin resistance and um, with a type 2 diabetic that's wonderful because that means that their body doesn't require as much insulin and since they're already producing insulin, their pancreas isn't so overloaded because they don't have to produce as much and maybe they lose a little bit of weight. Um, with a type 1 diabetic, it does about the same thing, except my body's producing no insulin. I have to inject all of it with old Cornwallis here, or with a syringe. I still use syringes sometimes. And, um, but it still works in the same way. This helps me ha take less insulin, and I've been using it for about two weeks now. 
I'm gonna go up from uh, the 500 milligrams I'm on to a thousand and so far I, it's been um, good and Cymbaline is a synthetic version of amylin which is another hormone that type 1 diabetics don't produce and um, both of these medications uh, help reduce your insulin requirements both of them are supposed to make you feel fuller which is a wonderful thing for a type 1 diabetic because we often have no sense of um, satiation and I believe that has to do with the fact that we don't have any amylin left type 1 diabetics google amylin it's a-m-y-l-i-n and uh, look into simulin because um, you know think about it a normal person produces amylin if, if we don't it stands to reason that it might be very important that we have you know, um, some of it running through our bodies, and that I really, really want to be put on Semolin too, but it's a little expensive, and I'm going to talk to my, der I mean, my endocrinologist about it. Uh, but anyways, I'm currently I'm just on metformin. Um, metformin has a couple of potential side effects. The most common one is um, stomach upset and, uh, like, nausea, diarrhea, um, constipation, things like that. Now, luckily, uh, I don't know whether it's just an individual thing, or maybe I'm, I'm really just extrapolating way too much out here, but maybe it has something to do with being vegan. I don't know. Vegan diabetics? You tell me. Um, I have had no stomach issues whatsoever, no nausea. Um, I have been feeling fuller sooner, which is wonderful. It's so nice to feel full, but I still don't feel like I used to before. Um, I have had no diarrhea. Maybe a little bit of constipation, which is really weird for me, but it seems to be going away. Because I eat a lot of fiber. I eat like 50 grams or more of fiber a day. So for me to have a little bit of problems with having a bowel movement was a little strange, but it seems to be going away. And it wasn't anything too bad. Um, <laughs> and uh, so those are the potential side effects. But I've had none of them so far. Um, my insulin requirements, like I said, have gone down, and that's wonderful. So I'm expecting a little bit of weight loss, and I'll check in with that later. Um, um, I'm hopeful that it might be able to help with my periods. Um, and to tell you the truth, because I'm, I'm really, really into natural medicine and not very trusting of the pharmaceutical industry, I'm a little bit sad that I had to resort to another synthetic drug because right now the only one I'm on is insulin but the results have been wonderful before this and I'm still taking them I was on a myriad of uh, supplements um, in the hopes of something helping with pancreatic function a little bit something helping with insulin resistance so I was on and still take and I did believe that some of them have shown some benefit I was on uh, GABA which is a non-essential amino acid that I would take in the morning I was on Geneva Sylvester, three tablets a day, one with each meal. Um, I'm on cinnamon with ALA. ALA is alpha lipoic acid, um, three tablets a day, one before each meal. Two tablets of chlorella in the morning for detoxification because insulin is full of chemicals. And also because I don't eat always 100% organic, 100 organic food, although I do eat a lot, uh, pretty high percentage organic. Um, I would take bitter melon sometimes, either raw or in a smoothie or with MT. Um, what else would I do? I took seat kelp for iodine, um, bruise yeast for chromi chromium, uh, B complex for, um, to cover all, mainly for the B12. Um, and that's, oh, by the way, that's very important with metformin because it has been shown that it can deplete the body stores of B vitamins. So if you're on metformin, if you want to try metformin, do yourself a favor and make sure you take a B-complex vitamin and eat tons of B vitamin-rich foods, which luckily for all the vegans out there and anyone else who wants to be healthy is um, fruits and vegetables and grains. Uh, and there was something else I was on too. What was it? Or am on. Why am I saying was? Oh, digestive enzymes here and there because I seem to have a problem with digesting fat a little bit. Gives me a lot of gas. <laughs> um... I don't know. I have a feeling there's something else, but I can't. Oh, amla, which is a uh, Indian gooseberry. So, um, I think I've blabbed enough. I just wanted to tell you guys that I'm having a really wonderful experience with metformin so far, and then I'm going to keep it up, and I'm going to report on it once I up the dose. I'll tell you guys if any of this goes away, any of this um, 
pregnancy stomach. And, uh, but mainly, my next blogs are going to be about nutrition. So, type 1 diabetics uh, who aren't vegans, it'd be really cool if you'd keep checking in here and there. Uh, I'm going to try to be very respectful of all people. I'm just very interested in, like, the health benefits of my way of life and um, the, I guess, ethical ramifications of it. And uh, vegans, well, I don't blame you if you're not very interested in diabetes because I wasn't either until I got it, but you never know. Anyways, thanks everyone for watching, um, and I hope you're all having a wonderful day.